In this video, we're going to focus on creating a customized tooltip. And this is really a HTML customized tooltip. It's going from top to bottom. And of course, you can still see there's still some tiny items that we can probably fine tune, which we will be doing eventually. However, this is the most important part here. We're going to create this completely from HTML. That we insert here, we grab the points here, as you can see here, and it will show nicely here as well. And it's completely interactive as well once we select one or we remove the other and this will be a very important part to learn and it's also very advanced and requires a lot of knowledge so i hope you're ready for it because this will be a quite exciting journey however quite challenging at the same time in this video we're going to focus on the viewers question on how to create a custom html tooltip in chart.js and here we're going to create one absolutely from scratch and this was basically a continuation of another video where i was talking about how to customize the tooltip or at least a breakdown and here we had a question from datu prasant at that time he was asking the following he well he said uh, well explained but in the customized tooltip case please make a video on external html table data to be projected on the tooltip so we're going to do this one we're not going to make a table although we could make one but basically you can use a div and we can put anything in there and i will just use here an unordered list because it's probably easier to read and understand compared to a table compared to a table with all the multiple html elements of in there so um, the biggest issue which is correct is the documentation code for this seems very difficult to understand requesting for video all right so let's work with this so I have here, this is completely blank. And what I want to do is because I want to avoid certain uh, parts that I repeat. And this video will be long, by the way, because there's a lot of parts and things that we have to explore. So I have here on my own website, which is chartjs3.com. And you can find it here. And you can find here below the default structure that I tend to use consistently. So I thought I would just copy this, paste it in here. So we just copy this part. We just paste this in here. All right. So I have a default item. That's perfect. I'm going to just cut this out here and put it in here in the title. And there we are. So now if I have this, I save that. Refresh, everything works fine. Here we have a fixed item. I'll make this a line chart just for the case because the other one was also a line chart and I think that would be suitable here for now. Save that. All right, so we have this now. What we're going to do now is basically create the part where we activate the plugin, we're going to, or trigger the function basically to create an external tooltip. So for that, I just have to check my notes because this is a very long part here, or at least this part is so easy afterwards, you will notice. We're going deeper and deeper. So in here, what we're going to do in here is basically the following. We're going here in the options, in the options here, comma, and then we say here plugins. And in the plugins here, we're going to put in the tooltip. And here what we want to do is we want to deactivate the default setting because if I save this right now and refresh, you still see we have here our tooltip. I don't want to have this one. I want to deactivate that. So we're going to deactivate that. So we say here tooltip and then we say enable. Enable, false, so it will not show up. So what we do want to do is, because we want to do a few things, we want to have a position where we can do position intersect, I guess, not necessary if you have only one line. If you have two lines, that would be probably suitable. But what we have to do here is the external. And in here, we need to give it the function name. So this could be any function name you have. So let's say here, for the sake of simplicity, I will use here just the external tooltip oh, tool handler. All right. So if I save this now, refresh, of course, nothing happens yet because we didn't activate anything yet. So you can see here, this function has not been defined. So if I save, save like this, refresh, and then here, now our tooltip is gone. Nice. So what I want to do now is I want to activate this. So to activate this, basically we have to put in the most important part here, and it will be somewhere here up or down, it doesn't matter so much. We can do it in the, the data block because it's part of the data block or just below here because the config, this part would load this one, for example, here. So of, for now, I'll just put it here up. Oh no, sorry, we cannot put it here up. We just put it down here because we have still some data that might be dependent on that. So what we're going to do is the following. 
we have to break it down in blocks. So I'm going to explain these blocks first because this is the most important one. So we have our foundation ready and what I want to do now is just to make sure we have a clear picture of what we're going to do because the custom HTML tooltip can be complicated if you don't have a clear picture. Especially if you look at the documentation, you see a chunk of code, but it's absolutely not clear what's going on. All right. So first of all, to create a custom HTML tooltip, you can see here this one. It consists of a few, few items. And the CSS is, I put it separate because we can work on that later on. But the most important part is first here is, is triggering it. So how do we trigger it? Well, we have this here. This is basically the trigger will load here. Then it will start to load that specific part. However, at that moment, we need to check first, does it exist? If it exists, it will just continue on here down. But if it's not existing, we need to create the tooltip or basically use the create elements. We have to load through that code. And that's basically what we're doing here first. So we have to create, we have to create this, connect this to this one here. So it will create a tooltip if there's none existing. And then after it will start to go here down on where it will be triggered as well on if the, uh, we will hide the tooltip if it's mouse out. If it's mouse on, it will trigger here again. So the, basically this is the one for the mouse on or hover over, but this one is the mouse out. And then also what we're going to do as well is the, afterwards is this one here, the text of the tooltip, which will consist of three parts, which will be the title. And then we have the body. For example, the title would be maybe the label. That's usually the label. And then here the body we will have like the value. We have that a square color. And we have here the uh, labels. And what I mean by labels is this one here. Well, we can just enable it so we can see it. So basically, it's this one here. Up here, the yellow is basically the title, which is our label here, if I'm not mistaken, or labels, sorry. And then we have here, when we move over, you see here the lower part, which will be the body, where you have the color and the number of votes and the value. And that is considered the label plus the value. And so this part is basically the, the body part of the tooltip. However, as you can see, when you move away from the tooltip or we mouse over or mouse out, at that moment, the tooltip needs to disappear. We need to do this as well. But what we're really doing here is we're doing the disappearing effect. But after we go to another one, we need to destroy the old tooltip, else we will get in HTML the previous data. So that's basically what we're doing, it's looping toward it. So this is why here, what happens here is the following. We have the text of the tooltip, we have the tooltip, uh, the title, the body, and then we need to create or remove or create it. How do we remove or create it? Well, we will destroy it, basically, and we have to recreate a new one based on the new information. If we don't do this, we will hold the old data in there, even if we move over another data point where you want to show the other data point. So this is very important. Basically, you're doing the JavaScript function now and you communicate with HTML. And then finally here, it's we are going to set up the tooltip positioning. So this all together will create it because the tooltip positioning is just understanding if you are hover over here, where the tooltip should be showing up as well. So we have to control that same with this here. So basically what we're doing here is we hover over here. It creates a tooltip with information. The moment we mouse out, it disappears. It doesn't destroy it, but it just hide it. Yes. So as you can see in here, that's this one here basically. Hide tooltip if mouse out. Why? We didn't hover over any other place. But the moment we hover over another one, it will destroy the old one and grab the new data, which is green, the, the square color of green, and of course the number of votes, etc. etc. And this is what it does consistently. And also with the positioning relative to wherever we are at the data point. So this is the most important part. All right, so now you have this understanding of this, it's probably time to start working on the first part here. We're going to trigger the tooltip. So what we're going to do now is basically the following here. We're going to do this one first. We have to trigger it. So trigger and check if it exists, yes or no. So how do we trigger this? Well, let's look at this here. We already created a tooltip here. We already had this external part. This external is a constant, but this constant will be basically a function in itself. So we're going to copy this. 
So we say it is external, but because this is a constant, we need to put it here above, so it will load first. So in here, what we're going to do here is we can just say, yeah, uh, maybe we can call it the tool. It's not really a tooltip plugin. So tooltip, maybe custom tooltip. Custom tooltip plugin or block. It's probably better. So uh, in here, we're going to say the following. We say this, and we have to make here a constant. And this will be a function immediately. And what do we do with the function? We say equal, and then we get the context. We say constant. And basically what we're doing here is what we call a uh, arrow function operator, writing in short a function in JavaScript. So we say here this, and this is our parameter. And in this parameter, what we want to do is here we say constant. Then we grab here two values, the chart, comma, tooltip which are uh, essential for us, equals context, all right? So once we have this, we can now start working on building it. So basically, this is the trigger itself. And uh, what it really does here is the following. We say here, another one, not a constant. And this constant will be the element we're going to work on to create our tooltip. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to trigger it. All right, we trigger it, but then we need to since this is the, the first one, but the first one is, it's not chronological, meaning that it will go down first. So this will be referring to here. All right. So number one is down here. And then later on here, you can just say here will be the, this is the trigger part. This is one, the trigger. I'll just put it in here because then constant here will be the following. That will be, we can just give it any name. I'll just say tooltip element equals, and then we're going to use a function name because uh, I saw in charge of documentation, they use this one, the get or create or create tooltip. And then we can say here chart. So we get this one. And basically this is the first part. So what this really does is we're going to once we load here, it triggers this, it will load this stuff, and then eventually it will check here first for this specific function, which of course we have to make here up, because why this one, this function needs to be loaded here above first. So what we could do as well here maybe is this, console.log, and then we can show here maybe certain value. You can grab a context, I'll just put this here out, so we don't get any error. Put it in near semicolon, save this, and see what happens. Here what we have, we open up well, nothing at all as of now and if I put in the chart doesn't show anything at all all right so for now it doesn't show anything at all however later on it will start working on it so this is the first part so now we're going to work on the second part in this video we're going to focus on to create a tooltip or basically do we have a tooltip yes or no if we do have it we don't have to create it but we can get the tooltip else we need to create a tooltip. So you might say, why do we need to create a tooltip? Well, if you render a chart for the first time, it needs to load, and it also needs to load probably the tooltips that we need to create. But we're not really going to create tooltips, we're going to create diff elements in there. But we need to first check if it exists, yes or no. All right, so you have here the trigger, yes or no, and then you go, basically this exists goes in here, we will trigger this function here, and this function will start to work on it. All right, so to do this, we have this here. This console was not working anyway, so we can ignore that one for now. But here we have this. And uh, what we have here is the constant of the tooltip element, all right? And this is a variable, but also a function at the same time. So it will push this in here. So what we want to do here is we're going to say here, new constant. And what's the constant name? Well, get or create the tooltip. Check, do we have a tooltip, yes or no? And if no, we have to create one. So then we say here this equals, and then we put in here the parameter. And the parameter for this one is the chart itself that we have here. And then we say here the arrow expression function, or the arrow function expression, meaning that we're going to create a function for this. And this function will do the following. First of all, it says let to grab the tooltip here if ever we have it so we say equals chart dot canvas dot parent node dot query 
selector div. All right. So what's going on here? So you might say, what's this? All right. We're going to say here, the new tooltip will be chart.canvas parent node. And then we search the parent of the div. So here's the, the question. What is the parent of the query of div? If we're going to create a div, which we will, and basically this will be the div eventually, but right now it's not. You need to check. Are you existing? Does it exist? And if the answer is no, because that's why we're searching here. We're searching for something here. So let me check here if we can maybe find anything if we hover over. All right, we get stuff. As you can see, we're starting to get stuff here. But do we see any div here? No, nothing at all. So we get stuff, but we don't see the div. So then chart.js is saying, or we're getting a response in JavaScript, says, sorry, we cannot find this. This doesn't exist at all. All right? So if it does not exist, that is not a problem. All we need to do is the following. You say, if, we're going to make an if statement, if no tooltip element, if that is true, or if there's no tooltip element, we're going to create. Yes, remember, when we trigger the first one, we need to create it. And then basically the canvas is the parent node. The parent node of div is canvas. It's the canvas tag here. And I will show you later on how we can check that. So then we have this. Then we say we grab the tooltip. We say the tooltip equals document.get element by, oh, sorry. Is that, that's not, sorry, that's not document got element. It's document create element. And then Single quotations, and I put in here caps box div. All right, so it's very simple. Do we have any? No, we cannot find any. All right, then we need to create the element. So if we do this, then basically we could append this. If we would append this to the child, then it will eventually work. So, so what we have to do here, we have a div, and basically, you don't only have a div here. So, basically, I'm going to show you what we're going to make here. We say the div. Because if, then you're going to give this a class for the CSS later on. This will be our CSS class. And then another div here. They, and then we have this here. Wait, I'll just put it in comment out so it won't give me any suggestions. Here, tap. Then what I want to do here is an unordered list. Closing unordered list. So and another tab and here class uh, anything whatever it will be here ABC. So that's what we're going to do here. And this needs to be eventually inserted into the canvas so that in the canvas we will see this uh, canvas and canvas closing. That's what we really want to see. All right. And this would be then this all indented one more time. This is basically what we're doing in JavaScript language. Instead of HTML, we do it in JavaScript by checking here. So this would probably make a bit more visual sense. So what are we going to do here? So we created here this div. We have this div here. All right. Then what I want to do in here, I want to grab here and I want to add the class. So we say here dot. And then we have to check here what's the class list. All right. So we say class list dot add to add a class list. And quotation is a string, and then in here I'll just give it very simple a tooltip design. So this is our class. And once we have this one here, we want to still also add this one, and later we need to append this here, and this will be appended in here. So we say here the following, and I'm going to give this another item, and this item will be the tooltip on order list. Tooltip ul dot oh sorry equals. And this will say here, almost similar to this, because we're going to create a new document or a new element. So the document dot create element quotation unordered list. And then we can say here as well, let's add up a class on here. So we can almost grab this, and I'll just uh, grab here the UL. Remember, because we need to pinpoint the class in here, the UL, the tooltip UL add class list. And here, just I will just say your tooltip ul. I'll just make this small, small letter. That's fine. Tooltip ul. All right. So once we have this one, what we need to do is we need to append this. So what is append? Append means attach. So we attach the child to the parent, meaning that this is basically what we're talking about. This here is the parent of this, and this would be basically the grandparent of this one. So that's the child, child, but 
in essence it would be the parent this is the parent of this very important so you understand this and I covered the other video on that one as well however here we're going to do this now so what we're going to do here is the following let's append first the this one to this one here so we say here I'm going to say here append append to parent now we say here tooltip dot and then we can say here append so oh, sorry append child what is the child of tooltip el which is this one this is the tooltip el well that is the unordered list so that's the tooltip ul this is not a string it's a variable remember this is a constant variable or a variable itself so don't adjust that one all right so once we did that that's number one but of course we didn't yet add any div to our canvas which we need to do here so what are we going to do here is basically this since we cannot pinpoint the canvas like this we need to say we want the parent node or so basically what we're talking about these are notes these are all considered notes this is a note and this is a note and then there's even there would be a text we call the text note that's later on by the way we'll, we'll figure that one out or so you will see this so since we are not able to specify exactly the canvas we'll just say we want the parent of this we grab the parent of that put it in there all right so we say we're going to grab this and say dot append child on the tooltip so basically the tooltip element tooltip el will be appended on the canvas or we're going to look for the parent of this one which is the canvas so we will append it on there so that's basically what we're doing here so once we have this we're almost done and then we have one of the complicated parts now that's the first one of it and then we say return tooltip el all right and here pretty braces and there we are so what we could do here for example just for the sake of it we can say here console law and let's grab here now the parent here chart canvas parent node or i guess this we could get save that and refresh all right oh, unexpected token on number 70 of course sorry these are all no not necessary because we already have them already had them up all right so now we hover over look what else, what happens we hover over we see here now the canvas can we find the item as well we have the canvas so let's see if we can get maybe the parent note because i want to see if we can find the div here hover over all right there we are now you can see we have the div which is in the canvas itself or it's somewhere in there where exactly to be honest i can't say i guess it's it's oh sorry no this is correct the chart box is here the canvas is here and then we have here this div i guess the div right now is somewhere down here which is all right so basically it is in here but also not it's just beside each other which is fine we're going to play around with that because let's let's play around with this a little bit I want to make sure that you see it because maybe you say well I don't see it yet so let's get this class here we have this class here and this is why we did this here we go in here dot we say your background color let's give it black and then what we need to do is we need to give it a fixed height and width so we say width 10 pixels height 10 pixels save refresh now we have it all right of course it doesn't go away yet why we didn't hide the tooltip if mouse out we didn't do that yet we'll do that later on what i want to do is eventually i want to do the css first because i know that this will become a problem if we don't do it uh, after this because it will be then better position so that will be next in this video we're going to focus on the css part of our tooltip we already created this here but we need to do the tooltip now I, uh, for the CSS part I thought I would skip that to move on here but I realized we need to have this and the reason why is that right now you can see here you have this here and it just does this here but we need to get it positioned here to see how it really works and looks like so I'm going to write some codes here and these are just basically what you can just copy along um, 
which is really specifically for the tooltips. Remember, this is the most important. We already have two classes. This is why we added classes. If you look at the example from the documentation, they they put it directly in JavaScript. I don't recommend that. There will be 10 extra lines on JavaScript, which could be done basically in CSS in a far shorter way, which is far more efficient. All right. So let's start with this one, the background. Black, well, what, uh, what I will do is hit RGBA. And then here, of course, what we're going to do is we make it black, but with a transparency. So we want to make it a bit visual, 0 0.7, that is more than enough. Next, what we have is a border radius. Border radius, this is to give it a little bit of round border of three pixels. I guess four pixels is quite common, it's usually a nice one. Next, font color. Let's give it color white. And then we have here uh, the opacity and the opacity this will become very important later on so we say opacity one by default how will we hide it later on you will notice later we will hide it by making it transparent which is brilliant by the way absolutely brilliant i'm going to remove this here all right next one we'll say the uh point uh, pointer events this is basically the uh, mouse when you hover over do you see something we'll just put it on none for now uh, next position our position right now you can see where our position is when we went here I put a height and width position went here which is not what I want I want the position absolute later on we're going to work with the uh, positioning which is the other part which is tooltip positioning that will be more and more specific with regard to that but here all we have to say is absolute because in JavaScript we will get the exact position and then we say here transform and what we're going to do is transform Transform is giving an effect, and then we say here translate, which will be eventually needed later on, because we say here the position will be 50%, but then we want to put it in the center, so it's half half, and uh, later on, once you see it, you you understand a bit more. Now we have the transition effect, so the transitioning, and transitioning is basically the movement of that effect. What will happen? And what we want to do is, for example, here is when tooltip, when you hover over here, you see the tooltip jump here. And this should be not too slow. If not, you see the tooltip slowly moving here. That doesn't make sense. You want to have it uh, not move it in a second, but below a second, like one hundredth of a second. So we say here 0 0.1 second and ease. No special effect, just basic effect. And then finally, we can do a border here if you want. We can border, maybe just to make it a bit more unique, you say red solid. Two pixels all right if I save this let's see what happens now you can see here now we have something of course it doesn't work yet it's still in the absolute positioning although we get the design already so the next part what we could do is the tooltip UL so basically the tooltip UL is the unordered list because eventually the unordered list will define uh, certain parts within if there will be text here there should be items in there and it should look a bit more appropriate so what I'm going to do here I'll just write this down you can write along with me or code along with me I copied this already because this will be later on very visible and useful all right so we say here tooltip margin zero and then we say here, uh, list style so list style meaning the dots on the unordered list at the from the disk we don't want that we say none no dots no no margin no no uh, indentation as well so padding zero we put it all back to the things and then we say text align center why center I want to put the title which later on we have we put it in the center but the other text we can put maybe left or right but it's alright this this will force it to the center once we have that font weight I'll just make it bold, uh, bold. font family by default I don't know I think it's sans but I would say font family will be uh sans serif all right and finally we have text transform i want to make the title eventually uh, uppercase so text transform then uppercase all right save this of course here right now you will not see anything yet but you can see here there's something going on there's a dot here i'm surprised that this dot is even showing but we can double check that as well what happens here console of we can check here the elements why is the dot showing here oh of course this is the border dot right now yes so these are the border dots so if i make here the width 
10 pixels, you will see that this is the border, border button block. Uh, does it have you? There you are. And a height, same story. If I do height here as well. So here, you basically, now you have already a lot of freedom to insert anything you want. So move over here. Do you want an image in here? You can add it as well in here, basically specific image or logo or etc. etc. All right. So that's it for now. This is the CSS part for the first one. Later on, probably we'll have to do again a CSS, but this is the most important one. So make sure you have this so later on, once we do the tooltip, it will start to look nice. In this video, we're going to focus on the third part, which is the height tooltip if mouse out. All right, so just a quick note. I realized that uh, the way how I draw the picture was not 100% not accurate because basically the trigger, this part, contains all of these codes in here. So don't worry, your code, but if you follow along, everything exists ex exactly the same. Don't need to adjust anything, it's all fine. Uh, however, later on we have just nested in here. So I just want to make a better visual representation so you have an understanding of it because it's a big chunk of code. So all right, what we're going to do now is to hide the tooltip if mouse out. So right now, if you look at this here, we have this here, and if you mouse over, you can see here it still shows. What we want to do now is we want to hide it. So how do we hide this? Well. First of all, let's start to work on that. And this is really a brilliant thing. Um, because basically what they did is they used the opacity here. With the CSS, we already created the opacity. So this is why this was assigned you to do first. So having that one here, we can now start to play around with that opacity. Remember, the third part is inside here. Oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted. The third part is inside here, as I showed you here. Trigger and then hide tooltip. All right. So we say hide if mouse out. Very straightforward. And in here, this is a quite simple and a brilliant way to do it. Say an if statement. We say if tooltip and then dot opacity strict zero. Then we'll say here tooltip element dot style dot opacity equals zero. So basically what we're doing here is we just create a CSS. So we have this one part here. What it does is here it runs through here, we get the tooltip constant so it understands here what's going on. Opacity equals zero and then in that moment it will start to run here and all we do is in CSS, basically what we're using in JavaScript is a CSS command to make opacity zero, what we have here on opacity one. So basically, when we hover over, this will be show if mouse over, and here down, hide if, oh, sorry, that's not here, I have to do this, hide if mouse out. How to hide it? Just make it 100% transparent. So opacity, if you don't know what opacity means, opacity basically means this. Opacity 1 equals 100% visible. Visible. And then opacity 0 would mean 100% transparent. So instead of hiding it, you just make it fully transparent. And this is to create an effect here. So, and the reason why is just basically here that if you would hover over here, it will gradually move away and change. All right. So let's start and work on that. And when you have this one, because basically here, this is what you have to understand here. This says you get this. It will. So once we have the trigger here, we get the create tooltip, which is this constant here. We get all of this information, and then it shows here return tooltip element, and it says you constant this equals that basically this equals this so you can see here what happens this says okay we're going to run through this code and then we say i want to get this element but i don't know what's the element but we know the element is the answer of this element is in this function here so all right let's read this function first so we can read this here and then we get here all right we get all the values then we return this whatever is in here return here all right so i hope that makes sense so from there on, then we can say if tooltip opacity, everything has been set because here we created the CSS and the classes and all the elements. So once we have this, we say here return, but return is nothing. So 
don't return anything because we don't want to return any anything in the HTML. No, we only want to set something in CSS on zero. So now we have this. We save this. And here can be a curly braces. All right. Oh, sorry, not curly braces, but this is a uh, parentheses, and uh, no, not parentheses. Uh, sorry, the the uh, dot com. I forgot the name right now, but I'll show. I will, I'll probably get up later. On. So refresh semicolon. Sorry, that's a semicolon. So then look at this here. You can see the dot down here, and then if I move away, there we are. All right. Now it doesn't work, of course. Why? It doesn't loop true. It will only do, do it once. We have it has to create a loop, which will be afterwards. Because now we have at least the hiding effect. Now we can do here, and this is a whole loop. And this loop here eventually will start to work on everything. So this part here will be bigger, but this will be also cut in multiple chunks. All right, let's start and continue with that one. In this video, we start to work with the text tooltip. Basically, the part here, this will contain the title loop, the body loop, and of course, the remove and create. Because right now, what is the issue? If we have our tooltip here, let's go in here. If I refresh, you see we have the tooltip. It shows here the red dot and the corner here. But I only can do it once. If I hover away and then we go in here, it doesn't work. So there's a loop in there. But of course, to solve this, we need to do a few things here. We first need to get the text because what is the text matching with it? We have a title, we have a body, and we have, of course, the remove and create. And basically, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to first extract the text so we know exactly which text we need to grab. For example, here yellow with the value of yellow, which we number three, and then probably here the number of votes, etc. etc. So let's start to work on this. Remember, as I told you previously as well, this part is a block that consists of multiple blocks, but also this number four block is in the trigger block number one. All right? Meaning here. We put it all between here. The parentheses must be down here, which is this one here connecting. Very important. All right. So in here, slash slash, and then I say here number four would be the uh, tooltip text. So in here, we're going to do the following. And what we're going to do here, first of all, I want to show you how you can grab or extract the tooltip text specifically. So what I'm going to do here is I say console log, and then we can grab the following. We'll say a tooltip.title. All right. And you might wonder why tooltip.title or why even tooltip? How do we know this? Well, look at this. That's why we're in this block here. This explains why we're in the block because we have this constant of tooltip, which is the context here. And it's also in the chart. So everything is in here. This is the one that shows us. That's why you also have the tooltip.opacity where it understands how to make something transparent. But this tooltip here also is very useful for title and of course any other values. I'm going to show you another one, which is the tooltip body. All right. If I save this now and we hover over, you will see we will extract in the console log the values. Open up developer tab. And if I hover over, all right, you can see that we get the purple, which is the title, and we get, let's look at this here. Open up this, the lines. This is what we call the lines. And this is the number of votes, which is number two if it's purple. All right, and every time, as you can see, every time we hover over, it works, except that the CSS doesn't respond yet. So same here, if you hover green, you can see green, and you get probably the value of green. Oh, sorry, uh, it just jumps up. You can see here, number five, that's green. If you do red, blue, etc., you can see here, you get everything, so that's nice. So that's basically the first one. And you can see here this chart box here. You can ignore that. That's probably here, this one. Let's save that. All right. So if I refresh now, we only get our tooltip. All right. So we got this part here. So what we need to do is we need to loop through this. So it will every time show the moment we trigger it. Simple as that. So in here, what we're going to do here is first we're going to do an if statement. And this if statement will be the tooltip.body. And this tooltip dot body will show the following values. Or do we use this? Why? Basically, just same here. We say if in the tooltip body is a certain value, we were going to use something, or we're going to uh, grab in the tooltip body the specific items. So we say here constant, and the first one will be the title lines. So I'm going to give a title lines here, not because it's a line chart. It's just one of the terms that they're using here. You can use anything, but also if you look in the title. 
eventually you would look at here somewhere uh, if I'm not mistaken or is it here they are using the term lines as well so that's why they use that term but you can use anything else it's not essential because this is just a constant you can give it anything you want all right but eventually you will extract the specific lines here so here we're going to create the following we say here tooltip no, dot title show this value or if there's no value make it blank yes remember the title shows us basically the purple here if there would be no value here maybe just blank it will not show the text here simple as that so there's like an or get the value or nothing that's the first one the next one is cons and then we say here body lines which is the lines or the values in here that we will get this one here the lines of course this is just a constant but here now we're going to do here is tooltip dot body dot map and map is a function basically a function that uh, will loop through it every time with a specific command and then we say here b yes so basically the b here don't get mistaken it's just basically this that one but i will show you what it does so, so get b and get the from b b dot lines what is b dot line well basically body lines that's this one here the lines so this is the shortcut it's basically like a, a short version b is the short version of to the body Dot lines all right very important don't get confused here don't waste your time on uh yeah don't don't get confused on that all right so basically what it does here it will just grab these values here in a loop so we'll understand what is part of it and what is not so once we have this final item here is another constant this constant is the tool tip list item why list item remember what we want to do here so well let's create this first we say document dot create element here li so why do we have this one suddenly here well remember when we had when we start drawing here we had the following we had the tooltip the unordered list and here was the div so basically what we really have is div and then here oh i cannot do this one sorry i want to just give you a visual representation here. So this is the div. So it's a div. And then here in div, sorry, in here will be unordered list. And here we'll get the list item. That's what we want to do here. Then we have again unordered list. And of course, then here will be slash slash and then div. That's basically now what we're doing. We're taking now the next step, step and the next step will be a loop. This will be looped in. And will only show the li that is relevant what is not relevant it will not show but also when you hover out it will remove it and then will refresh itself or reload basically instead of what we're doing every time by refreshing you can see this and then move over but then we will trigger 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 because this already works so it will trigger here and then later on we can position it all right so this is very important here we have this part now and this is just only a single part now what i'm going to do is and that will be the next one is to loop through the title so this is very important now it's time to focus on the 4a which is the part specifically on the title so we're going to loop through the title so let's start and explore how to do this so basically what we want to do is at the moment we are in here we should see the title text in here so it will be shown because we already get it in here so we just need to figure out how to insert it in our div or basically in here all right to do this let's go in here then in here i'm going to say here for a which will be our title loop so in here we're going to do the following we're going to say here title lines where we grab the constant that's here and then we say for this for each so we're going to look through this for each title that we can find there we're going to loop through it and we're going to give it a function or we're going to create something we'll look through this and what we want to do here is basically the following we have basically the li so we have the list item in here but what we want to do here to be more specific 
it's not only this you want to put in here eventually a span and this span closing will have the title text that's basically what we want to do so that's what we're going to add up here so to do this all we have to do here is the following first we say tooltip unordered list or ul dot append what are we appending well we're appending this tooltip li because we created it but we didn't append it yet but we need to loop through it with a loop y because we want to destroy the inside every time when we go to another tooltip if not if you would put it here outside the loop it will always show that it show always the same value which is not what we want we need to have depending on if you go to yellow green purple etc you should see the matching color not the one outside of the loop but it must be inside of the loop so very important here we say append child tooltip li which is this one here so we grab this we paste it in here and this one is goes back up here to our ul here as you can see so we have this one added this here so well, of course what we need to do more is this one here so what we're going to do here as well is we're going to now create the span create the span so to create the span all we have to do is here first give it a span name so i'll just say here tooltip or what is the item i guess it's a span so we say tooltip span equals document dot create element and here span all right so once we have that we want to attach this or append this here in the li so all we do here is we say uh, we get the tooltip list item that's this one here basically and then we say dot append child and here oh i see this sorry make sure you uh, fix this one as well double l don't do that single l only append child and then you get the tooltip span so once we have this we have attached this so basically the li is in here and then we we also have the span here the span of course has no text yet so what we're going to do here now is we're going to create the title or add the title in here for this we need to create a text node first so let's say here uh, create a text node with node sorry with the text or title specifically so what we're going to do here is the following so we're going to say here uh, let's see here we say here constant there is a tool tip title equal document dot create text note remember we're now adding a text note as a text note is basically a note in here that's basically this part we call this a text note well this is just a note by default but this is specifically here because we want to have a text note and what is the what is the text note here well let's look at it remember we had here our title uh, we have this one here the title lines we grab the title and then you can see here this title lines is for each we rename it to title so we're going to grab this so every title line basically is now renamed to title because of the loop so we remove this uh, single quotations because it's not a string it's a variable it's a title all right so now we can double check if this really works just grab the tooltip title paste it in here save and refresh and if i hover over you'll see here the tooltip title let me double check we have a lot of uh, console logs I'm going to root these, save, refresh. Now you just get purple as a string, beautiful. Here as well, here as well. So now let's append the title into the span here. So to do this, let's look at this here. We can just remove this. We can say here, because remember, span is the parent of the text node here. So this is a child. So we do append child on the parent. So we say here span dot append child. So we're going to attach the parent to the child. And what's the child name? Well, a child name here is the text node that would be tooltip title. So if I save this now, let's try again. Refresh. There we are. 
So now you see a part of it, of course, our positioning is still incorrect. And of course, it doesn't work here, but now we get here green. All right, it, it still goes a lot here. Don't worry about that. We'll figure, figure this out later on. We'll fine tune that one. So now we have this. All right. So once we have this, we're basically here done. Let's see here. This will be done here. We're done with the title loop. Next one will be the body loop. Now it's time to continue on this B4, which is the body loop. We already have the title loop, so we grab the title already. But what we need now is the square with the matching color. So we need to grab the color. We need to grab the matching text of it, which is basically the data set text here. So if you would loop over here, you would see this number of votes here in blue, a square blue of a blue square with the number of votes. And then, of course, the, the data point. So that's what we're going to grab. We're going to extract those out there right now. So let's start and do that one. So that will be part four, B. All right. To do this, let me visualize what we're going to do here. Because what we need to do is we need to create a few items. And we're doing almost similar to what we did here. Basically here, let's put in here. I'll make you a paragraph. And in this paragraph, you will have a span. And this span will be the color block or color square. That would make probably the right that would be the right term. Closing span. And then we have another item here, the uh, label. So that's what we will work on right now. So let's start and explore how to do this. So to do this here, slash slash, I'll say here, B of uh, 4B. And we say here the body loop. And the reason why it's a lo loop is because we will loop through it every time. And afterwards, you will see how it will look like. So the first thing what we're going to do in here is we're going to create this paragraph here. So I can say here constant. We'll call the tool tip body p for body paragraph. And let me say here document dot get element. Oh, sorry, not get element, but create element because we need to create an element, and our element is the p. So I'm going to do a caps box p. Next, what we need to do here is now a for each. And we're going to do a for each exactly same as here, but then specifically on the body with a index number. So we're going to say here, the body lines. And the body lines is basically this one here. We did here the title lines. Now we do the body lines. And in the body lines, we say here for each. And then parentheses. And then we have to do another parentheses here. No, oh, that does not work. All right. And then in here, we'll say the following. We say body. Why body? Because of this item here, we have the body. Oh, well, we, already, we have to rename it. But basically, it will be this here, the body lines for every body, comma, I for iteration. Here, create a function. Or uh, it's a arrow function. And then in the arrow function, we're going to say the following. What do we want to get? We want the color. We want to grab the color data and we want to grab or create a color square. So we say here constant colors equals tool tip dot label colors. And this one is, of course, the I. So what this is, is the moment we hover over the certain label or the tool tip, we will get the color matching, which is the square. So once we have this, the next thing is, of course, we create a constant where we say color square. And in the color square, we'll say this is the following document dot create element. And we'll call this a span. This span will need some CSS design, like a square or maybe with rounded borders, etc., etc. The width and the height, we have to set that as well. So what we're going to do in here is we, get, we will say here the color square, and then we'll say here class list dot add. And what is the class we're going to give it? I'll just give it very straightforward color square as a class list. So there we are. So now we have this here. What we need to do eventually, because this will be JavaScript based, but what I want to do first is I want to just want to grab this one here so we can see 
if we get the color, if we hover over the right item. So let's save this. Then refresh. All right. Open up developer tag. And if you go on purple here, we will get here the purple ID or details. As you can see here, we will get here the border color. But basically, we get all the information that we need, which is perfect. Because now we can pinpoint the border color and the background color. We can assign them. So what we want to do now is we want to give this a proper color. Because right now there is no uh, CSS yet, but what we want to do here, make sure that when we hover over, we get already this data. We want to extract this data and put it in CSS. So what we say here, the following, we say here, color square. And then what we'll do is we say the style dot background. And then we say equals colors. And as you can see here, the colors basically here or the label colors that's the one we grab colors but then we say what do we want the colors is basically when we get the console of this equals colors right so what we want is in here the colors dot background color and colors dot border color to grab these items here so all we say is these colors so the background color of this CSS style or this class will be equal to border of colors dot background color just this one here background color is capital c and the other one will be oh sorry that's this one here capital color capital c for the color and then same here for the border color so i'm going to grab this i'm going to just copy this then we say your square style border css then we grab this one cut it out put it in here all right, so and then we assign these, meaning that now if you would do here console log, let's move the console log down. We'll grab this one here, or we will specifically grab this here. You will see that we get the color code. Save that, refresh. There we are, we get only the color. This is exactly what I want because this color is the purple one. If you scroll up here to the purple, uh, probably it's the it's the fifth value here the fifth is one five three one oh two two five five one five three one oh two two five five matching there we are so we grab this color it's matching we assign them now what we need to do of course here later on we're just going to add a css style to put it in there but then what we have here the next item so we have now we added the color square we still have to put in the css but it doesn't matter but well, now what I want to do is I want to grab the text of it, which is the text label. So we say here the following, constant text label. And this equals document.create text node. So we're going to create a text node exactly the same as what we did here. Because here we created also a text node. But then this will be what exactly, well, we'll grab here what is the body. Why body? Just same like here, we had the title here, but now we grab the body. And if we do this, we're almost done here, basically. We can do a console log just to make sure. Do we grab the exact or the right body? Here, save this, refresh. Let's move over. You can see here, number of votes is 2. Is it correct? Yes, purple is 2. Let's go to blue is 19. And there you are. You can see that. Beautiful. So we have this. All right. So what we're going to do now is basically we want to append these. So append both the color label plus text node store text label. Or maybe it's not color label, it's color square label. So in here, we'll say here, because where are we going to append it to? We're going to append it to this item here. So basically, this is the paragraph that we created. We created these and we even extract or had the colors now and what we have to do now is we have to append it in there and insert all the data in there so what we're going to do here is the following we say here to to the body paragraph then here we say append child what i'm going to append which child first or what first we want to add the square first so we have the square first and then we're going to look here where are you? The color square. 
we're going to put it in here first and then we have another one also in the tooltip body so because we have added this now and then the next one would be the text note here's the text note which is the label text note label here we get the text label here there we are so once we did this and save this you can refresh we move over you see nothing happens yet you see what's going on well guess what we only append it to the paragraph but this paragraph right now is nowhere to near the div here so it's just outside of it we didn't append it yet so what we have to do is eventually we have to put it in and to do this we have a few items basically what we have to consider which is the remove children and the other part which is the add new children which is basically this part here all right so now it's time to work on 4c which is the remove and create and the reason we're going to do remove and create is so far we have this issue here we hover over it here and then it starts suddenly disappears but if we move over here and here we need to show it again but what we originally need to do is when we are here for example here and when we are gone now it disappears but now the, what happens here it doesn't remove it because the data is still in there it's just on transparency zero let's see if we can find it still we can find it here you just see here you can see here or the opacity is set on zero so if i set this opacity back to one it's just there and then if i move over here again probably yeah as you can see it will reset it once we hover out however then i put this back to one and you can see here this i don't want this and the reason why i don't want this i want to remove these and then after we can insert all the the data as well because we're missing still the the uh the, what i said the tooltip body text which are we missing we still need to put it in here we didn't include it yet so that's why it's not showing but don't worry about it we will be showing it but what we want to do is at the same time it must destroy or remove the old stuff and replace it so basically every time we hover over somewhere we will remove the old paragraphs in the tooltips because right now as you look on this or this all these list items here as you can see you have all these list items here they need to be all removed we don't need all of this excess data it doesn't make any sense as well uh, remember this is a tooltip so what are we going to do now in here we're going to continue on and we have this so far we'll do semicolon here and then remember this one is basically out it's floating it hasn't been connected anywhere we only know that we have attached this and created this but where it is on the document that's a question mark because we didn't attach it to any other element so html doesn't know where it really is it's just floating somewhere so what we're going to do now is we're going to create it by removing the old children and create and adding the new children in there which are and if i refer to children i'm referring to this paragraph here or even to this li item this needs to be del deleted and then refreshed or recreated with our loop data remember because here we have the title if this would be green and then we hover over to purple it should delete this information and convert it into purple so every time it needs to refresh all right so now time to work on this so what we're going to do here is the remove the old children and before we even do this we're going to create a new constant and this constant is this called the ul note why ul well basically we're going to search for this note here yes and how are we going to search for this well we say here going to tooltip we're going to look for the tooltip element which is this constant and then what are we going to search for? basically this here is a div that's this div and we say in this div dot query selector meaning go search and query means search search in this selector the following item what are we going to follow uh, looking for is the ul so that's what we're doing here we're going to search in this div for the ul and once we have this now we're going to work on this and then we say here the following wow then we're going to search here we say ul note which is this one here bob 
dot first child first child you the first child in here and what we want to do here is basically remove if ever we have one so you will note that first child because what is the first child here you might wonder what is the first child well the first child of the unordered list is the list item and as you can see here basically what we did then later on we're going to move this one in here but we're going to remove the first child so every time we're going to remove this and then refresh when you hover over another data, uh, data point we were going to recreate one in a loop so that's basically what happens here but that's what we're doing visually all right so we say here dot remove semicolon all right now next what we need to do is here if so this would basically mean check if there would be any if we have any remove any old children yes why because this is if not you'll get this it will keep on stacking on each other and then once we did this we want to add new children which will be eventually the new version of this which is the loop here and this new children we say here ul node because that's this one here go search again in the ul query and then we're just going to insert this part here again and we say here node dot append child and here we're going to search for the tool tip li as you can see li here refers to this one here this is basically tooltip li we append this one and then what we want to append more is this floating item now we can append that one as well as we say ul node and then here we're going to say as well append child and then here we put in the to tip body p so basically we're going to add this in here and there we are so once we save this all right let's see if i have this correct once we save this now when i refresh we should see there we are we're getting the data oh, let me double check are we going are we working correctly all right still have something here that we have to work on and i guess i figure out what it is hold on i'll just check all right so there's nothing wrong here everything was correct i will tell you later on what happened or why i thought something was wrong however first of all what i want to do here is because i did here a tiny mistake i want to put the paragraph inside here and this is not how you put it inside because what will happen is it will move it here this will make the li so i want to grab this one put it in here because then we are building like this because if not what we did was the li will go in here and then you would have here li and i figured out that maybe that would make sense as well we just put another li below here however for now that's all right because this is how it was if you do it two times the ul node don't don't do that one i want to have the this one inside the li so that's here all right so there we are so the next item, oh, this one can be done gone because it's already like that. So the issue what I had was the following. So this was basically the issue here. The reason why this is just disappearing and then doesn't show here is we need to later on reset it. So I'm going to show you, that will be the last part eventually, where we reset the item in the function as things. But basically we could do already a part of it. So it will just start to look nicely so let me show you here so we have that done let's see here where are you where are you the opacity we're looking at the opacity here so what we're going to do here is the following i'll just show it here just put in here opacity equals one save that refresh there we go away refresh there we are tooltip is already working but of course this later on, I will put it in in the final part, which will be eventually here, the positioning. I'm going to work on the positioning now. Now we've done the entire part four. It's time for positioning the tooltip, which is part five. 
Besides that, we will also do one more thing, which is basically the CSS of the body of the tooltip. You will see later on, because right now it's always in the corner, we are not able to spot it. So later on, you will see that this needs to be adjusted as well. All right, let's go back here. You can see here we have this. It does work here nicely, as you can see, but you still have to do a few things. So we have the structure now. So we don't have to work anymore on the item itself, except that we need to work on the positioning and the design. So let's work on that one now. So this is here, it's basically uh, positioning of the tool tip, basically finding the data point location here. We want to put the tool tip here, the moment we hover over here and here, etc, etc. So what we're going to do here is this item here, I realize we can just leave it there. That's all right. We have to leave it like this. You cannot add this directly in CSS. And the reason why is we already did it in CSS. The thing is that the moment we hit to this part here, it will set to zero. So that means that this must be here, set here every time on one, when it will create a new child or basically creates these nodes. At that moment, we also need to set this on one so it will be again visible or else it will be again transparent. And you will not be able to spot it like what we notice. So what we're going to do now is getting the position. What we need here is the following constant. And in here, the constant, we're going to grab, basically we're going to make an object here with the object constant. So say object or destructuring, object destructuring. That's basically the term here. Offset let and position x comma offset top which is the default, we will grab the value here, which is the default position y. So basically here we're going to figure out how much to the left do we need to move from here and also how much down we have to move. So we have some space. All right, so this will be equal to chart.canvas, which is our chart or our canvas, basically. All right, now we have this. What we want to do now is we want to figure out the diff. So we're going to pinpoint the diff. Why the diff? Because the diff, if you go here, if you go all back to the beginning, was basically here, the diff, this is the one, the diff, we're going to create a diff. This is the diff. And that's also, if you hover over, that you can see here the red border and the dark transparent background. That is really where the diff starts. The UL is inside the diff as we saw in the text I first described. So I already removed that one so you cannot find it anymore, but that's all right. You probably figure out now the structure what we have. So what we're going to do here is the only thing we'll say here, the following tooltip element dot, and then we say style because we need to position it. And we need to do this in JavaScript because it will depend always on the item that we have. Every time we hover over one of the dots, it will grab the position on there and then it will automatically reposition it to that. So we say here style left equals position x plus tooltip dot caret x. And the caret is basically the triangle down or where it starts. And then we say plus here pixels because it's in the pixel term. All right. So let's save this and see what happens here. As you can see here now, look at it. We're moving now in the right position. And position here, what we're really doing here is on the X, means horizontal level. So exactly here. However, it's still not here on the right top here because this is the Y level. Basically position Y, that's what we need next. So we have this one, so let's do again. We say a tooltip element, it's capital L, and uh, uh, basically the EL are both capitalized. And then we say here style.top equal position y plus tooltip.caret. And now we have, of course, the caret y plus pixel. So basically, this concatenation. We're working here with a concatenation value. So here, once we have this, and we could even check here, what is exactly the console.log so we can see the exact position or how it looks like. So refresh here, open up the developer tag. And then if you go on here, as you can see here, you can see it's 300.64. So that's basically how it works here. And then here, same, it grabs here, 
that's 286.16 so that's basically the positioning here on the Y so once we have this next part would be as let's see here what do we have you can see here what are we missing what we're missing our color box we need to do some CSS on that one that's what we will be doing that and what we are going to do as well is basically maybe give it some font uh, style so I'll just say here tooltip element dot style dot font equal tooltip dot options dot body font dot string all right so this will grab any of the values and in the text if ever we have any font style however we don't have anything specified but if you did it will overrule because it would change the font type and then here finally here any padding that we need to have so tool tip dot oh, el dot style dot padding and then we say here equal we can just say tool tip dot options dot padding plus pixel and then plus so we concatenate it where we say basically top and bottom pixel here so i guess this will be maybe like uh the padding here is maybe five or or ten pixels so we say your tool tip we can check that one options dot padding plus px so why twice if you're very familiar in, in css css you say padding you can do padding 10 pixel by 20 pixel like this they will be my top and bottom will get 10 pixel left and right will get 20 pixel i don't know exactly what is the pixel amount here we will just grab this one and then we can see as well i'm going to just paste this in here save this and let's see what we'll get all right so hover over it you can see here now and i guess we have absolutely no amount of value here well i guess then in this case there's no padding here as well fair enough don't worry we're going to fine tune this as well so we have this here the thing what we need to do now because basically we're done now with our javascript we did everything here we're completely done the only thing what i want to do here now is just going up here to the css and i want to play around with the css here but what i want to do here specifically is the square box remember here you have the square or sorry the color square and the color square has a class that we added here color square so copy this then here dot color square and we can say here maybe 20 pixels oh sorry the width 20 pixels height 20 pixels save that move over all right so we have to double check or maybe i didn't add it in there as well that could be as well uh, because I'm quite surprised it doesn't show height what we could do as well is uh, maybe here we just just make a border solid five pixels and then we say here uh, make it red let's see what happens just to make sure we have anything all right we have nothing here so what I'm going to do is I'm going, I'm going to solve this one quickly. Let's see where the issue is. All right, so I figured out the solution or the problem here. Basically, it's this. Oh, this is basically a CSS logic. CSS says if it's a span, it's an inline, it's display inline, meaning height and width are not allowed to be uh, defined because it will get defined. It defines the height and width based on the content in there since uh, since it's a square it doesn't have any content what we need to do is we need to convert it into a inline block so we say here display inline block here and if we save this you will see now it starts to work and there we are okay you can see we have it but there's still one problem here are you satisfied with the with that square i am not so what we're going to do is we're going to just fine tune that the reason why this happens is basically the background color is uh quite transparent and now what I want to do is I want to convert that background color here you can see this background color is a transparency if we change that with the border color we just add up here border color 
then you hover over now you can see here this okay so what you could do here is maybe do some fine tuning here i guess here border let's say border width if i put in here maybe uh, a three pixels that might be better and then we say here if you want something if you want a circle or something you can or more rounded border border radius uh four pixels save that let's try and i want to just convert this one time back to the background color see if we can see the border now visible oh sorry background save that refresh uh, all right i noticed that the border color for some reason is just not grabbing it so border color here border width three pixels doesn't work so what i will do then is instead of that i'll just come we can remove the border width here border radius uh, and then we just adjust the color here a bit to make it far more visible save that refresh and now we have this nice part here should we have some padding i'm sure we should so if you want any padding here we could do that as well um probably it should be here in the tooltip design because here basically everything is uh defined so we say padding five pixels top bottom left right everywhere padding save that refresh now we have the padding here nicely there you are so basically with this we can do it and you can still do a bit more and this is just all css remember that the square is a css and of course the other one the number of votes could be a css as well and then, and then there is still something else that I want to show you because in case you want to do that you might have to do some tiny adjustments but I will show you right now imagine you have two data points or we have two lines so now what I want to do is I want to show you for example here imagine right now we have only one line so this looks all fine and what if we have two lines because you will see that you get a slight difference here so let's create a second data set so I'm going to grab this data set from beginning to end and then comma paste this and what I want to do is I just remove this what I'll say here tension I like to make it a bit more nice rounded so tension 0 0.4 same here above tension 0 0.4 the only thing what I want to do here I'll just change the number of sales and I'll just change the color here I'll just grab this color here I think this is purple I'm not sure I'm just grabbing the color same story here single color only all right so we have this number of sales i'm just going to make up some fictional numbers here our sales is everything with 20 20 and 20 all right save refresh so we have two lines here all right that looks far more nicer but you can see here the number of sales here is 23 and you have this one here is three so imagine you want to have them both being shown which is very easy to do but then you might discover a tiny uh, adjustment that is required so what we're going to do in here we go in here to our tooltip and all we say here is the following we'll say here position is nearest meaning showing the nearest one and this is a string comma here save that and then what we want to do is see another one is in the options we'll say interaction interaction and what we're really doing here now is that the moment we come here we want to show both items immediately so we say here the mode is index and this indicates that we will show in one tool tip instead of going to here or here anywhere if we are here it will grab both of them instantly but then you will see something maybe that you don't want and you want to adjust that so we say intersect or oh, intersect they are all right so so we we cancel intersect from so what does that really mean intersect basically means the moment you hit here that's an intersection like intersection or a crossroad so when you cross it that's it but now we don't want we just want to be in the mode somewhere in the nearest area all right save this refresh and now what happens oh my goodness what's going on here as you can see this looks absolutely horrible so you don't want this here's the issue let's go up here uh, or we can just leave that here that's fine we have to look here really at the core issue which is basically here so what we need to do here in the color square basically what we need to do here is add up like a uh, break or we have to put in a paragraph as well so you have to really think here because what happens is it just adds some items 
So let's look, where do we need to adjust this? Uh, we have here the color, so we have here the body tooltip. We have here this part here, so let's explore. So what we need to do here is we need to create basically between here a new item. And so let me explain what's going on. So why is this really here? We have two items here. What happened? It loops. Remember, I told you here, this is basically a, for each loop, it's a loop. We're creating a loop. But there's a problem in this loop here. This here is not enclosed. So what we could do is we can add up here the following. So let me make it very clear how it looks like. So we have an understanding of this here. So here what happens is we have this paragraph we created. So in the LI, then we have the paragraph here. And in this paragraph, we are going to say the following. Well, we have a span, which is a square box, or a square color, color square, sorry. And then we have here the ending span, and then we have your text. All right, very simple. So this text here is in here. However, the paragraph here, the closing paragraph, and we can probably do this something else, could be an LI maybe or something even more better, but you have to probably really restructure it. This part is quite quite tiresome to do because you have to imagine the code visually, and that takes some time. It's a real struggle, to be honest. However, so you have this here, but because it's a loop, it loops it and it gets now two values because it says, oh, wait a minute, there's two values. What we can do here is we can add up here a new paragraph, so this is the easy way, but not the most professional way. And then it will grab here also a paragraph, so it loops the paragraph in here. So it will look like this. Or we can just say a span with a CSS class. And then you say this one will be a display block. What happens with a block, it will grab the, the whole width, left and right. Very important. So if you grab the complete width, left and right, then uh, sorry, left and right, not white, but right. Uh, in that case, uh, it will push the next span down. So you could do in span or in paragraph. So because right now we have here paragraph, it sounds a bit, it's kind of ridiculous to have two time paragraph, paragraph in here, although it's easy. Although easy, but I don't want to do it. So I'm going to do here span. We're going to give this a class. So this will be a span as well. It will be specific class that will just be a block class or something like that. So this is what we're going to do here. To do this, we need to have here the loop. Well, we have here already some items. All we can do now is this a constant, and then we call this our um, display block. I'll just say display block span equals. Let me say your document dot create element. Span. So we're going to create this span here. All right. So what are we going to do here? So it's in the loop here now. What we want to do here as well is add a class. Add the class here. So we say here, display block span, and then uh, class list dot add. Then I'll just give it a class list and I'll just make it simple. Display block here. All right. So I'm going to grab this and just go to CSS here above and just make this class here immediately. That and say here display block. All right, so we're done here at least with the CSS, and we go back here down. So we have this done here. But what I want to do now is to make sure that this uh, where are we the display block is in here correctly because right now it has not been append. So what we need to do, if you look here up, it will be a class with display block, and these two need to be appended in this display block. All right, so this. Is not any more correct. What we want to do is here, we want this display block being append in the paragraph. Very simple. So we say here, this tooltip body paragraph dot append child, we get the display block span. Very simple. All right, so we have this one. But these two here are not children anymore from this. No, this is the parent. For these two so these two are children of this so we're going to copy this put it in here and as you can see here what i'm talking about this here this one is the child of the this one here the tooltip body and this span here this is the display block 
display block. So you can see here, now this here is, these two are the children of this one here, all right? So once we have this, I'm going to remove this now, and now save this, refresh, and let's look. Oh, 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 what's going on here? I was not expecting this, sorry. Uh, let's see, what am I missing here right now? Hold on, I will just check. If not, maybe we need to make a paragraph. All right, sorry, I just checked. Uh, it, it, I was a bit sharp, but I realized that I have a missed uh, spelled item here. Sorry about this. Save this here. Now we save this, refresh, and now there we are. Nicely, neatly underneath each other. Beautiful. Of course, here, here probably you have to work with the padding on the canvas. However, so far, I, I don't want to go deeper in this one right now. I will make some other videos going deeper in this topic where we explore a bit more on this one. However, this here is basically the answer on how to create your own custom tooltip. And this was a very long video with many uh, segments all together. So I hope this was clear. If you still struggle, put them in the comment section below. Make sure you take your time to really study this one. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.